My name is Edgar and I'll be talking about emotions. In this video, I'll talk about psychological changes, natural behavior, and influences on emotional expression. A fundamental question we can ask ourselves is, what are emotions? According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the definition of emotion is a conscious mental reaction, for example, anger or fear. Subjectively experienced as a strong feeling that usually is directed towards a specific object and typically accompanied by psychological and behavioral changes. However, according to a textbook, Interplay, it begins by giving us a scenario. Suppose an extraterrestrial visitor asks you to explain emotions. How would you answer this? You might start off by saying that emotions are things that we feel, but that doesn't really say much. For in turn, you would probably describe feelings as synonymous with emotions. Social scientists generally agree that there are several components to the occurrence we label as an emotion. With that being said, we can now go into subcategories in accordance to emotions. Number one, psychological changes. Many psychological changes occur when we encounter strong emotions. For example, psychological components of fear include increased heart rate, elevated blood pressure, slow digestion, and pupil dilation. A marriage researcher named John Gottman notes that symptoms such as these occur when couples engage in intense conflicts. He calls the conditions flooding and has found that it impedes effective problem solving. Another example is, have you ever logged into Canvas and realized you forgot to submit an important assignment? The first thing we feel is our heart drop to our stomachs and everything seems to pause all around us. This is a perfect example of how emotions hold a vital, a vital role and psychological change to our body. These sensations, these sensations allow scientists to discover many different studies that gather important data about how emotions can control our physical actions. This leads to my first question. Has there ever been an incident where a certain emotion made you feel out of place? Second subcategory, nonverbal behavior. Early studies suggest that a small number of emotions are associated with distinct nonverbal expressions that include facial and bodily displays and vocal bursts, which are reliably recognized and displayed across cultures. Other behavioral changes include a distinct facial expression, posture, gestures, and a different vocal tone and pace, among others. Others can often notice and understand these emotions. It's rather easy to recognize when someone is experiencing a powerful emotion, but it's more difficult to pinpoint exactly what emotion they are experiencing. A drooping posture and sigh could indicate exhaustion. And this leads to my final subcategory, influences on emotional expression. Culture, gender, and social media are influenced by emotional expression. For instance, depending on how you view your culture, certain traditions may inflict various expressions. The phrase I love you offers an interesting case study of cultural differences in emotion expression. Researchers found that Americans tend to often say I love you more frequently than members of most other cultures. Various cultures have different emotions when it comes to expressing the term I love you, resulting in cultural differences. So this leads to my final question. Does your family use the phrase, I love you often? To quickly summarize, expressing our emotions plays a significant role in our day-to-day -day life and how we portray ourselves. It's a universal action that can be seen through humans of different cultures and gender. The way we feel emotionally can heavily affect our physical state. This just goes to show how powerful emotions are. Peace.